interrupt this program for a special news bullet. Bullet, bullet, bullet. Ah! For a long time, I've been pretty down that I missed the last biggest event in the Hyperreal Zodiac. This was, of course, Fire Festival, and I didn't have a channel then. That was the peak Hyperreal event after the Game Show President thing. However, I'm here now, and I can make a video to mark the transition to a new age. The age of the Travis Scott Burger, and the end of the future. It's late. Today's nihilism is one of transparency. Guys, I love this so much. It's amazing. Really, the burger doesn't matter. The purpose of the whole collaboration is to create this image. This is the Sistine Chapel of post-modernity. We have what Frederick Jameson called the nostalgia mode, a perfect surface, or what Baudrillard called the simultaneity of all functions, without a past, without a future, operationality on every level. It's lit. So what does it mean? First, it's a perfect positive interference of celebrity, consumer capitalism, and the nihilism of signification. There is, of course, a commodity, this, offered by the golden temple of consumer capitalism, McDonald's, which doubles as the paradigmatic sign of global capitalism. One, in that it's ubiquitous, the largest restaurant chain in the world. Two, in that it universally liquidates locality, like this. Yeah! And of course, it exploits hundreds of thousands of workers. Not every celebrity could pull off a McDonald's burger. Few have. The last to do it was Michael Jordan, the same year that Travis Scott was born, coincidentally. Without a past, without a future, operationality at every level. But this is not exactly a commodity with positive associations. It's, lit. it's unhealthy to start, perhaps even predatory, and it's not exactly a luxury good. Travis Scott can overcode all that, however. There has to be some sensible confluence here. The image being metastasized here is this rap artist, whom I was introduced to while he flew around on a giant mechanical bird. Now, insofar as this image is concerned, while there is, of course, a real product, we cannot try to conceive of Travis Scott as a person. Rather, he's an image. Most popular for this video with Drake. On the flame, he in sickle mode for copulating with a Kardashian, and before the McDonald's collab, for doing a concert inside a video game. I can bet if you're over than 25, this is going to start hurting your head. And coincidentally, there seems to be a pretty steep age cliff off of which Travis Scott's name recognition drops. Inside a video game. For the boomers, let's place Travis Scott in the broader context of hype real history. Here's the burger, here's the aforementioned fire festival, and these are connected via the current orbit of this black hole web of significations. But just in case you've forgotten where the spin-off parallel universe began, it wasn't here, but way back here. Paris Hilton, then a model with Trump model management, yeah, you heard that right, seems to have been the first protrusion of this particular rift, which now looks something like this as a whole weaving together the threads of all new media forms from the past three decades. And it's almost a perfectly self-referential universe where the simulation of fame becomes fame and they're all calling the paparazzi on themselves. We will have to wait to see how many future presidents come from this outgrowth, but it should remain under observation. In any case, what we can see is that the entire hyperreal zodiac is connected. Anyway, and if your brain's not melted, here it'll melt. The commodity, the source of all this hype, the event that is causing McDonald's to run out of ingredients in their stores is a quarter pounder with bacon and lettuce added to it. That's it. 
You can already add lettuce to any burger for free. This is a burger with bacon. Now bearing the nameplate, of course, of this guy. It's lit. This is not a lie. The Travis Scott burger is a burger with bacon on it. And this is the material crux of a goddamn ingredient shortage at McDonald's. This is the Travis Scott image. Unlike some of his contemporaries, his image is not generated lyrically. Lyrically, there's not much unique, and he doesn't stray much from the well-trodden yarns about luxury commodities, drugs, women, and being the realist. What sets Travis Scott's image apart is an ambience, or a mystique, an intoxicating litness. The sound is hyper-produced, but the videos, in particular, are saturated with all the surrealist imagery. Now this is where the image of Travis Scott and McDonald's can align. He's not known for his personality, commitments, or message. He doesn't interview much and doesn't talk about much outside of music. The goal for which he is most stalwart is his fans getting lit, which of course is something McDonald's wants and can appropriate. This lends to the whole persona a kind of ethereality an ambiguity that enables Travis Scott to become the image of anything, because the surrealist ambient mass doesn't add up to any coherent index. And Travis Scott is not his real name, but a totally unassuming stage name. He's amorphous, and amorphous is perfect because you can invest it with any associations you want. This universal transparency means there is nothing more than the image, the appearance. There's no requirement to pretend at density. This is precisely the level of reference over which capital has worked itself. Whereas Marx said all is solid, traditional, melts into air, Jameson claims that we are witnessing a new kind of flatness or depthlessness, a new kind of superficiality in the most literal sense the supreme formal feature of all the postmodernisms. So let's be a little more clear here for a second. Celebrities generally, and rappers in particular, given rap's origins in protest, activism, and anger, politicize their image. Not all do, but there's an implicit expectation that you do, you know, stand for something. McDonald's isn't asking for those celebs. It wants Travis Scott, politically indifferent, perfectly malleable, Cool, fun, just get your fans lit. Yeah! Now don't take this as a criticism. I think the sententious manner in which celebrities lend themselves to one cause or another is entirely cynical, and it's pretty f***ing grating sometimes. The Travis Scott image, though, is entirely transcendent, flying over the crowd on a giant mechanical bird. I came to realize something new only when I saw the merch. We have for sale here, Travis Scott, surrealist image, but it's being coupled with something. Nostalgia. Look here. Now look back here. Jordan was the last burger meal when Scott was born. This is what Frederick Jameson refers to as the mode of nostalgia, and Mark Fisher referred to as reversing into a tomorrow based on a non-existent past. Now what past is this? I finally recognized it. My childhood. I'm roughly his age. I remember birthday parties in the McDonald's play place, happy meals, sponsored community events. McDonald's is selling me back my childhood via Travis Scott. Why do we need to be sold nostalgia? The past becomes increasingly attractive as the future becomes increasingly uncertain. And this is at least a partial explanation for this photograph. The target of these images are not those 40 and above, most of whom have never heard of Travis Scott, and not children for the same reason. It's the generation in between, without hope, without prospects, and who don't own anything. We know McDonald's is bad, but what else is there to do but go get lit? Yeah! You can't go to the play place anymore. You won't have fun with the Happy Meal toy anymore. Get lit. It's lit! This is a flat nostalgia. Repetition for no reason except that the future is bleak. This nostalgia is the theme of Scott's album, Astroworld, named after an amusement park he went to as a child one which was lost, 
closed and dismantled. A memory that left nowhere to return to. Suddenly, this whole thing becomes colored with sadness. He's got a Ferrari, sure, but where's he gonna go? Where are any of us gonna go when ostensibly our happiest days are behind us? When images like this only serve to remind us what's been lost? The disappearance of the future means the deterioration of a whole mode of social imagination. The capacity to conceive of a world radically different from the one in which we currently live. It means the acceptance of a situation in which culture would continue without really changing, and where politics is reduced to the administration of an already established capitalist system.